Collectives and welcome to my video for June. I know this video is a bit late, I'm really sorry, I've had such a busy and exciting summer that I just haven't had time to sit down and film it until now. Of course, I've decided to record it on what I think is the hottest day of the year, so I'm really sorry if you can hear someone mowing, all of the windows are open right now. It's one of my favourite seasons summer, it makes me really happy to be this warm. As you know, I was born in California, so this kind of feels right to me. The British winters, I just can't get on with, but this is really nice. But now, today's video is my June recommendations, which I know are a bit late, but I hope that they will give you some ideas of books you can read this summer. And I'm going to start with this book, which is The Matilda Effect by Ellie Irving. This is the story of Matilda, who is a fantastic inventor. Unfortunately, Matilda is also a child and a girl, so when she invents amazing things, sometimes adults think that she can't really have done it. Matilda is really upset about this, but she becomes even more upset when she talks to her grandma, Granny Joss, and finds out that Granny Joss used to be an astrophysicist, and Granny Joss discovered a planet. But, unfortunately, because Granny Joss was a woman and she was a very young woman when she discovered it, Granny Joss's boss was the person who took credit for the discovery. Granny Joss's boss, unfortunately, has just won the Nobel Prize for Physics for discovering the planet, which of course he did not do. And Granny Joss and Matilda have just two days to get to Sweden to announce what really happened to the Nobel Prize judges. This is such a funny, such a bonkers adventure book. It's really exciting. It is for about eight plus, the same age group as my books are for. This story is a really wonderful reminder about why we shouldn't ever underestimate anyone. It's something that I always write about in my books. My detectives, Daisy and Hazel, as you know, are always being underestimated and ignored when really they're incredibly smart and incredibly good detectives. The title, The Matilda Effect, is a real thing. It is the term that we use to talk about any time when a woman's discovery is ignored or attributed to a man, especially in science. Some of you may know, for example, about Watson and Crick, two male scientists who everyone says discovered DNA and mapped it for the first time. But what fewer people know and what is really important to remember is that Watson and Crick wouldn't have been able to do that if they hadn't been helped by a female scientist called Rosalind Franklin. They wouldn't have been able to make their DNA discovery without her. She was absolutely crucial to it. But unfortunately, Rosalind Franklin has kind of been written out of history. And that is what the Matilda Effect is. The next book that I want to talk about is Fly Me Home by Polly Ho Yen. I am a massive fan of Polly's books. Her first book, Boy in Tower, is one of my favourite children's books of the last five years. I think it's absolutely brilliant. And this is another really lovely book. This is a story about Lilu, who flies with her mother and her brother to London from another country. They become immigrants, they have to live in London, they have to wait for Lilu's father, who is stuck in the country where she was born. I loved this book because it's all about what it is like to turn up in London from another country and to try to fit in and to try to deal with the British way of life. I was three, I came all the way to London from California. So I flew halfway across the world, a little bit like Lilu, and I remember thinking just how grey and dull and boring London was. I complained there was never any sun and it was really cold and it was always raining. And that is sort of what Lilu feels as well. She really wants to go back to her beautiful home, which is so bright and colourful and exciting, and she feels like London just isn't very magical and fun. But of course this book is about her discovering that London really is fun and exciting and worth staying in, and it's about her making friends and learning to find her place in London. It's a really lovely, magical, beautiful book for anyone who loves good writing and a wonderful main character. This book is for 8+. The next book I want to talk about isn't out till August, but I hope that if you're watching this after August, you can go buy it. And if you're watching it before August, you will put it on your must-buy list, because it is one of the best books I have read this year. It is The Explorer by Catherine Rundell. Now, I don't have the finished copy, I have what's called a proof copy, which is um, something that's sent out to advanced reviewers to see if they like it. And I read it, and I didn't just like it, I loved it. Catherine's writing is so wonderful. Her adventures are so exciting. This book is about a group of children who crash in the Amazon rainforest. The plane they're in crashes, and they are left alone without adults to survive in the jungle. It is, as you can tell, an incredibly exciting adventure. It's also incredibly beautifully written. Catherine is a massive talent and it had me sobbing at the end. I loved this book. I think you will too. If you love stories of adventure and danger and excitement, you will adore this book. It is, again, for about eight plus. It is a 
brilliant, brilliant read. The next book that I'm going to recommend is for slightly older readers, and it is The Pearl Thief by Elizabeth Wayne. Now, you may have heard about Elizabeth Wayne's other historical books, the most famous of which is Codename Verity, which is an absolutely fantastic book about World War II, about women in World War II, and specifically young women and girls. Codename Verity is about a girl called Julie, who is in France spying for the British but is caught by the Germans and has to hold her own under really difficult, frightening circumstances. She's a fantastic character, I absolutely love her, and it was really funny because I had just written the first draft of Murder Most and Ladylike. I knew about Daisy already and when I read about Julie I kind of thought, that is maybe who Daisy is going to grow up into. So I love Codename Verity, it's one of my favourite books, and I was really delighted to hear that Elizabeth has written another book, a prequel to Julie's story called The Pearl Thief. And this book is set in the 1930s, it's set in Scotland, a big posh house in Scotland because Julie's family is very rich and privileged. Julie has to solve a really mysterious, really dangerous mystery in which she is a major player. She gets hit on the head and she forgets everything that's happened to her and has to work out exactly what happened and who is the pearl thief of the title. It's really exciting, it's really fun, it kind of reminds me of my own books, it has that same feel, and I think, again, if you like my books, if you like stories about the 1930s, if you like bold, brave, cool heroines, you will really enjoy The Pearl Thief. It's for slightly older readers, probably about 12 plus, so if you're one of the older members of My Detective Society, you will love it, and I think once you've read this, you should go and read Codename Verity because Elizabeth is a fantastic writer. I think she's one of the best writers at the moment writing historical fiction. And my final pick, as always, you know, I choose a classic book, a book that inspired me when I was younger, a book that I still love, and this month's is Agatha Christie's A Murder Is Announced. Now, I keep saying that various Agatha Christie books are my favourites. I do think that my favourite Agatha Christie probably is Murder on the Orient Express, but this one does run it close. It's fantastic. It's one of my favourite Miss Marple mysteries. It's a lovely, cosy village mystery, but with quite a a frightening premise, I think. It starts off with people reading their newspapers in this sweet town, and it seems like everyone has this perfect, lovely life, but what they read in their newspapers is an advertisement for a murder. The newspaper says that a murder has been announced, and it's going to take place that very evening at Letitia Blacklock's house. So everyone goes along, curious, thinking it's a game or thinking it's a prank. When they get there, they discover that there really is a murder, but it's not what they were expecting. It's a lot more frightening and it's a lot more real. And Miss Marple is called in to help work out the case. I think this is one of Agatha Christie's cleverest books. It's one of my favorites. And it's one that I've been reading because I've been thinking a little bit, because I have to work so far ahead of you guys. I've been thinking a bit about my seventh book starring Daisy and Hazel. And I think that in certain ways, I'm going to take bits from the plot of this book and put it into my own book, of course, with my own twist, with my own characters, with my own plot. But there's an idea in this that I really like that I think I might use. So that is it for me for June. Check back soon for my July summer reading picks and a special sneak preview of the Guggenheim mystery, which is coming out super soon. But for now, thank you 